raising our eyes to the sky, is such a simple, natural gesture that has always inspired humanity to push beyond the limits, to explore and discover the unknown. Today, we raise our eyes less to the sky, yet every day the greatest man adventure is happening over our heads, the exploration of space. Within only the last few decades, we have done extraordinary things. We have built very powerful telescopes to discover the most remote secrets of the universe. We have been to the moon. We live permanently in space on orbiting space stations. We have sent our technologies out into our solar system and beyond. This is only the beginning of our race towards space exploration which will take us to Mars and to achieve new goals that today we can only imagine. It's an extraordinary effort, but only a few can truly live these experiences. How many can actually go to space versus those who can only dream of the wonders of the universe that exist above us? What if there was a way for everyone to participate in the exploration of space? Simple like raising our eyes to the sky. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Filippo, president of Prima Luce Lab, an Italia company I co-founded in 2013 to create innovative telescopes that let you remotely explore space and the universe without the need to be a professional astronomer. So, can you be really part of the universe exploration? Is this a thing that is accessible uh, only to space agencies or governments or you also? Well, it turns out that uh, above our heads, there is a universe that anyone can explore. And if you know where to look and you can increase your eyes uh, sensitivity, you could be able to even see nebulas that are a result of stars' explosions up to distant galaxies, like the Andromeda galaxy, that is 2.5 million light years distance from our Earth. And this means that uh, the light that we capture in this video has been emitted 2.5 million years ago. So what happens if uh, not only we can increase our eye sensitivity, but what happens if we can increase magnifications, as we do with, with the telescope? You could find out that uh, a simple point in the sky, in reality, is another planet, like Venus, that you can see here, and where you can detect uh, clouds formation. So, in this presentation, let's embark together on a, in a journey across the universe with a picture that we can record with a compact telescope. And we can start from our satellite, natural satellite, that is the Moon. Through our telescope, we can see very small details, a few kilometers in dimension, even if the moon is very far away, around 350,000 kilometers from the Earth. You can see the Valles Alps, that is a graben, that is a geological feature with faults similar to the one that we have on the Earth. The Cassini crater uh, flooded with the lava flows. You can see where the Apollo 15 landed two astronauts in 1971, close to the Mount, uh, mountain range of the Apennine. Or you can discover the Hyginus reel, that is a long channel passing through Hyginus crater. This view is so amazing. And that I want to leave you a few seconds just to think of you are in a spacecraft around the moon in the orbit, looking down to the moon's surface through the window. And as you can see, we can discover thousands and thousands of uh, craters. Uh, and now we are moving towards uh, the moon South Pole, where astronomers discovered water ice that could be used 
in order to build a permanent uh, moon base. And this is the plan for the near future. And this is everything that you can see with, even with a compact telescope. So now let's point our telescope uh, to other uh, objects of the solar system, the other planets. As we saw before, you can see Venus with uh, the thick uh, uh, cloud formations that cover the planet and that create uh, a huge uh, greenhouse effect. And to the right, you can see Mars, the red planet that uh, humans aim to reach uh, in the next few years. We can point the giant planets like Jupiter over there and Saturn with the rings. Look at, take a look at Jupiter. You can see colorful uh, clouds formations and on the left limb, you can even see the great uh, red spot that is the largest storm in the solar system. And look at Saturn with its rings. And you can even see that the rings are not uniform. And there are different levels of rings. And the, the black division is known as Cassini division. And these are not pictures recorded by spacecraft or huge professional telescopes. This is something that is recorded with a compact telescope, again. So now let's point our telescope to, to the stars outside of the solar system. And let's try to point it in to the Milky Way. The Milky Way is our galaxy. And if we point to the, our telescope to the Milky Way, we can find out that there are regions full of interstellar gas. That is the red one that you can see in this picture. So with your naked eye, you should be able to see just the brightest stars. But with the increased magnification and light uh, capability, gathering capability of a telescope, this is the result. Within our, gal our galaxy, we can discover many new nebulas that are gas uh, uh, formations. This is the Rosette Nebula with, uh, at its core, a group of young stars, or relatively young stars, that lighten the gas all around. And nebulas, they come with many different shapes. This is the Veil Nebula in Cygnus uh, constellation. And you can think of it as a sort of a shock wave moving in space. And this is a very important picture for us because that's the first picture ever recorded by the observatory that we have here in H Farm. So it's a, an important one. Now we can move even farther away from our galaxy and point other galaxies. What we can do, this is a, the Andromeda galaxy that is the nearest major galaxy to the Milky Way that is our galaxy. And you can see the bright core at its center, but you also see the darker areas all around that are created by dust. And galaxies may look different, not only because of their different dimension, and, but also because you can discover that they have different shapes. And uh, we can also see different galaxies from different point of view. This is the M33 galaxy that looks a lot different than the previous one, not only because it's smaller, but because effectively we are recording a picture from a different point of view. And if we are able to collect more and more light, galaxies may appear where we do not expect to find any type of object. Like this picture is NGC 7331 galaxy, that is the top left one. And you can see that in this picture, there are a lot of other galaxies, especially take a look at the uh, bottom right part. It's a famous Stefan Quintet a group of uh, galaxies that are interacting each other. Um, and these are very dim galaxies, but you can think of every galaxy of that as a galaxy of our, with billions of stars. But above us, 
Not only we can take pictures of natural objects, like stars, nebulas, planets, the moon, we can, we can even take pictures of satellites or the, the International Space Station that orbits the Earth about uh, uh, every 90 minutes. And that's because uh, our telescopes, they have a very high magnification, so we are able to detect uh, very small details, even of uh, a very far away object in Earth uh, orbit. So I showed you real picture recorded with telescope, now you could be curious to know how you can be part of remote space exploration. Do you need a telescope? What type of telescope do you need? So in order to explain this concept, I wanted to represent in this graph the easy of use on the horizontal axis and the uh, telescope power in the vertical one. And when you want to buy a telescope, you may start looking at commercial telescopes from different brands all over the world that produce affordable instruments that they can be relatively easy to start with, but that they are limited uh, because especially in astrophotography, they have not enough power in order to allow you to get the picture that I showed you before. An evolution of these telescopes are the one that are called smart telescopes, and they are called smart telescopes because they incorporate in the telescope itself the technologies that allow you to take pictures. The problem is that even if they are easy to use, they are not powerful enough in order to record the same type of picture that I showed you before. Because, for example, with a telescope that can take a picture of a nebula, you can't take a quality picture of a planet. Then in, if you search for high performances, then you may start looking at components in the same way you can start to create your computer by building the processor, the graphic computer, and the motherboard. And in here, in the telescope world, you can start looking at optics, you can start looking at focusers, at mounts, at cameras, and all the accessories. And this allows you to create your personalized and powerful telescope, but it turns out that it is very difficult to make it work, very difficult to use, and there is a very steep learning curve. So it may be powerful, but not really easy to use. And that's why our vision as a company has been always to develop a system that is easy to use, but very powerful. And this allows more people, even new in, the, in this type of application, to really explore the universe. So that's why uh, in our company we developed, uh, first of all, a complete line of, of smart devices that allow you to convert any optical telescope into a remotely operated robotic telescope, ready also for a full automation system that works like a huge astronomical observatory, but compact inside. And this way, Essentially, you can simply move your telescope, even uh, move into very distant places, like searching, for example, for light polluted skies location, and uh, in less time be ready to use and collect pictures. As you can see in this video, I moved to a shelter in the Dolomite, not too far away from here, and I've been able to use my telescope from there without any power connection with a small battery. And this allows you to explore the universe even from uh, the Dolomites. And as we develop these technologies as an open platform, uh, we uh, developed also a system to create uh, complete observatories, like the one that you have here in H-Farm. So these big systems can be used even for education and research applications. But we have one more way 
to let you explore the universe, really. In fact, Prima Luce Lab is the first company in the world to offer also a complete line of turnkey radio telescopes and ground stations for remote space exploration in radio wavelength. So these instruments can be used also in daytime and in uh, very bad uh, conditions, like what we have this, this night, unfortunately. A radio telescope would allow you to explore the universe through the clouds, even in daytime. And our radio telescopes are designed for educational and research level radio astronomy, and also to make space communication available to everyone. So I hope that this small presentation got you curious uh, about uh, space exploration and uh, about how you can be really part of remote uh, space and universe exploration with a compact telescope. Thank you very much.